Start off with Kevin Allen, Detroit Hockey Now. Hi, Jeff. Um, we had Doug Kaiser on earlier, and he was talking about uh, going through all that he went through to try to get back on the ice. And, uh, you know, sometimes he was discouraged. But as a coach, were you confident he was going to get all the way back, or did you have doubts as well? Did you say to Kaiser? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think it, it took him a while to get some of that strength back. And as you just don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, to say that I feel confident, um, I didn't know how his body for sure was going to recover. Um, you know, I know that, that our people had a plan in place and, and we were hoping that, that he would continue, but you just don't know. So I can't tell you that. I knew 100% that he was going to get back closer to being real healthy. Uh, I didn't know. And, you know, we started the season hopeful last year, um, even though he was uh, lacking in, in strength for certain off the ice. I thought he was skating not bad, but as, the, as that first part of the year wore on, it looked like, um, you know, he wasn't able to play to the level that he's accustomed to playing. And so we said, let's Let's uh, sit him out for a while. Let's let's concentrate on on, on getting stronger, and, and he did that. And we didn't put a time frame on it. And ultimately, he got to a spot to where you know we felt he could go in and be uh, more effective, closer to the Danny DeKaiser that we know. And I thought uh, he played really well. And by the end of the year, I thought he played really well. And even though his strength at that point isn't even to where it was today anybody that he played with uh, seemed to play good hockey. And it, it's not just because of him, but, but he does a good job of that. He's a, he's a real good partner. So his strength now is way ahead of where it was a year, a uh, year ago, uh, way ahead of where it was six months ago, way ahead, probably where it was three months ago. He's worked extraordinarily hard at it. Um, you know, he's a committed person. And, and uh, so it's good to see him in that spot. Uh, obviously the defense uh, probably will look a lot different to, uh, uh, this season, what's his role in this kind of new uh, look defense that you'll have? Um, well, you know, right now we got him paired with Phil Heronic. They've been a good pair at different times when they've played. They, they've both played real good hockey together. Um, you know, so I would say he's a guy who's, you, you know, I think at the end of the night, it'll look like he's got top four minutes. Um, you know, I think he's been a top four defender in this league for a long, long time. I think he's underrated. I think he's one of the better defenders in the league uh, that can move a puck and can do other things as well. He's certainly not just one dimensional. He's not an elite offensive guy, but he can add offensive just through his transition and his puck moving uh, and his ability from the offensive blue line. But certainly I think he's going to be, you know, in our top four. And I think he's going to be one of our uh, primetime penalty killers. Um, we're not starting him out on the power play. Um, but you know, that, that would be his role right now. And then also I'd say have a major leadership role. You know, Danny's you know, been around a long time, this organization, he he's earned the, 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 the right to be a leader in this room. And, and, uh, so we look for him for some of that as well. Thanks Jeff. Yep. Next up, Helene St. James, Detroit Free Press. Hi Jeff. Anything further on Jakob Rana? I almost interrupted your, before you even asked the question, Helene, and just said no update on Verana. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know when I know more. Okay. And is there anybody um, freshly injured since yesterday or anybody not available from this uh, camp? Not that I know of at this point, you know, there's, there's, you know, we'll, we'll see, you never know what uh, the next minute brings uh, when you're in camp and you're moving fast. I haven't had a talk, a chance to talk a lot to our trainers uh, about today, but as of right now, uh, we anticipate everybody that's been healthy to be moving forward and be healthy. I just, you know, you're moving into exhibition season now and some questions about who plays where, who plays with whom. Um, and I know you've already said Dylan isn't playing, I think, at least the first few games, if, if not at all this week. How do you kind of determine, you know, like where does a Bobby Ryan fit? How much of a look are you going to give at Lucas Raymond, um, you know, Moritz Sider? I think you like him with with Luddy, right? But kind of how, how do you how do you sort this out? I mean, they are valuable, even if they don't count in the standings, these games. Well, they're valuable uh, from an evaluation standpoint, for sure. And like I said yesterday, there's a there's a balance between, um, you know, how many games you play in the practices, but the games are good evaluations. You know, like I like I like Maritz Sider and Letty right now, but we haven't played a real game, you know. And, and so let's let's let them have a game and see where they're at and then and then, and then continue to judge moving forward. Um, Bobby Ryan, uh, Lucas Raymond, they're both going to get chances with good players. And then they got to go out and grab jobs, you know, and, and Bobby's certainly been through this before. Lucas is, is new to it, but, but, you know, I think he's a, a kid who, who would love a job and wants a job, wants to do everything he can. He certainly understands that 
uh, if he's not ready to play a prime time role for us, that uh, that he'll start in Grand Rapids. And if that's the case, he'll be determined to work his way back up. That's the type of person I believe he is. But both of them are going to get opportunities. Um, you know, they're both going to get a good number of games. Um, and, and that goes for, for a number of guys. Um, you know, we got guys like Taro Horozzi and Riley Barber that have real good years in the American League. They're going to get a number of games. Uh, um, you know, whoever can grab jobs, grab jobs. I think it's as competitive as it's been here in a long time. I think our, our decor, some of the competition isn't necessarily who's going to make the team, uh, but who, who's going to play, uh, who's going to play in what roles, and then also who's going to be first call-up guys. And then at the forward position, um, you know, I thought about going to – more of a Detroit team and a, and a Grand Rapids team over the last two days, but I don't know who's on that Detroit team yet. So um, I stayed with kind of two split groups and, and we kept going and, and we'll, we'll use the exhibitions uh, season to determine who's on the team. How do you kind of divide up? I think you, you, you play Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday this week. Uh, it's a lot of games, like just to, you know, and divide up and, and get the looks um, with the players that you want together in one game. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you're, it's a little bit like uh, that, that movie, A Beautiful Mind. You have all these numbers and, and, uh, and, and that, and we, we have an Excel spreadsheet we work off of, and we plan it ahead of time, and then three guys get hurt, and it, you, you kind of got to replan it. And so um, we're in the replanning stage right now. Um, I will tell you that the first two games, nobody, we're going to try like crazy not to have anybody play back-to-back, so unless something unforeseen happens from this minute until – uh, we play the next two games. Nobody's going to play back to back. We're going to, uh, you know, Larkson Burt won't play those first two games. Um, Stalzy and DK won't play those first two games. And we're kind of balancing it from there. Um, you know, we play Saturday, Sunday, Monday, actually. Uh, and the Sunday game is a, is a noon game, I believe. So, so nobody really can play back to back in those two games. Um, you could play Sunday, Monday for certain. And, and, you know, we've got a set number of games for each player um, that, that we go in and try to try to get. Uh, depending on where they're at, what uh, positions they're fighting for, how many years they've been in the league, what were you know what what they need to be ready and, and hit the ground running, um, and, and then and then we try to do everything we can to stay within those games. But again, it depends on injuries. It depends on how guys play, all that kind of stuff. I think a beautiful mind, didn't he hallucinate people? To- just so long as I guess you don't start hallucinating inserting Nicholas Litz from inserting yeah. Federer into the lineup. But. Yeah. yeah, hallucination can be good, I guess, sometimes. But uh, we'll stick with the guys and the numbers we have ahead of us. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Next up, Ansar Khan, M Live. Hi, Jeff. Uh, talking to uh, Stetcher uh, yesterday, he mentioned uh, that he wasn't uh, happy with his second half of the season. What uh, do you think he has to get back to, or what are you looking for him to to get back to the way he was playing uh, the first half of the season? I would say Stetch, you know, came into the league, was probably uh, undervalued, um, was probably told he wasn't going to make it. He's undersized. He's not, you know, um, an elite offensive guy, and, and, and there aren't tons of those guys in the league. And, and the reason he's made it is because he's got uh, – the reason he's made it so far is because he's got a great determination, great compete, um, plays hard. Um, you know, and, and I think is able to play with some confidence. And I think, you know, he, he, he was playing really good hockey with stalls. He got hurt. He was out for a while, came back and didn't play as good. And, and sometimes that's just simply confidence. I mean, the, the difference be, you know, it's such a fine line between, between success and, and not success. And, and, and that's where confidence plays a big factor. So Stetch has to be Stetch. You know, he's got to be really, really good five on five player. Um, if he can contribute in other areas, great, but he's got to be a really good five on five player that we can trust that, that wins battles, that competes hard, that moves the puck, that gets us out of our zone uh, and plays with that swagger and confidence that, uh, that he's shown a lot uh, through his time here with us. And also uh, you've got a decision to make here before the season on a couple of alternate captains. Uh, are you uh, necessarily looking for a, a, a veteran, a guy who's been around a long time or, or maybe to, to develop a younger guy who's going to be here for a while into that role? Uh, we'll, we'll pick the captain that, who's the, the, the assistant captains that are best suited to lead this team right now. That that's the, the, uh, the way we'll, we'll go about it. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, be in contact uh, with my with my coaching staff, certainly with Steve and his management teams, and 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 we'll we'll decide on the two best assistant captains uh, to help this team right now, help lead this team right now, help uh, Dylan Larkin in his leadership role. And I would tell you, there's probably 
three or four other guys that I'll single out as, as guys that are in a leadership group that uh, are also going to be real important in fostering the type of environment that we want. Um, so I don't think it'll be limited just to necessarily the captains, although they'll just be a C in two ways. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Next up, Max Boltman, The Athletic. Hey, Jeff, what do you, what will you actually be like watching for from Lucas to, to decide whether you think he's ready for kind of a, a prime role in the NHL? Uh, I think the number one thing generally is impact on the game. And, and, you know, I think you can try to search and say, oh, that was a, that was a, you know, he, he did a pretty nice thing there. You should walk out of games and feel like he was one of the better players on the ice. Uh, it should be clear to my wife that he should be on the hockey team. Um, you know, and, and it's just the reality of it. Like it shouldn't be a hard decision. He should, he should, because if guys are equal, here's the thing, if guys are equal, um, then you keep your depth by, by, you know, starting a guy like Lucas, Lucas Raymond, the minors and letting him earn his way back on the team, you know, whether through injuries, we're going to have injuries at some point. So, uh, you know, I said this earlier in the, in the, in the week, like guys that, that are trying to grab jobs, you can't just be as good as another guy. You got to be way better. So when we watch the game, um, there, the impact on the game has to be great. How is his impact on the game going to be great? Um, well, ultimately, I think he's a guy who can really be an elite power play guy. So help our power play look elite when he's out there. He's he, it's not a one man show, but he can help with that. Um, you know, have the puck on his stick uh, a, a good amount. You know, if he never has the puck on his stick, it's hard to uh, make a whole bunch of offensive plays. Um, you know, I thought he made probably the best offensive play in this in the red white game the other day, but but it wasn't ten of them. It was one of them. Uh, find a way to have the puck more either by going to get it yourself or making sure that you're getting to facilitate and getting yourself open. And, and again, I just think it, it, it should be easy for all of us to look and say, wow, he was definitely one of the best players on the ice night in and night out. That's how you earn your way on the team. You know, Dylan Larkin did it as a young player and Dylan's different because he's a little flashier because of how well he skates. He's not going to be, Lucas won't be quite as flashy, but I don't, I think everybody sitting in the stand should be able to walk out. So he was one of the top couple forwards. Then you're making a case to make the team. And then I saw Zadina with Valeno and Gagne today. Is that where things stand right now? Is that a line you foresee playing together in some exhibition in the next couple of days or? Um, yeah, that, that, you know, we, we tried to set up our, our groups uh, to, to, to play uh, the next couple exhibition games. Again, a little different on the first group with Larkson Bird. So, but it's going to look somewhat similar to what it was. So, yeah, you know, uh, Valeno Gagne and Zadina uh, is something that we're looking at for maybe, I think, the next game, if I got my head straight. Thank you. By the way, my, my, my wife, I don't, that's not a slight on her. She knows hockey pretty well. She's been around a long time, but she should be able to pick out who the best players are. Is she going to do a post-game press conference then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Thanks, Jeff. Next up, next up Bob Duff, Detroit Hockey Now. And Jeff, you've coached in the Worlds, and you know we saw it last year with Veronica went over there and had a big World Championship and came back here and was an improved player. And I'm, I'm sure not that's not the only reason why. And now we saw it last year with Stetcher got over there and had a big role for Canada as they won the gold and is coming back. Um, is it just because they get a chance over there maybe to fill roles they don't in the NHL yet? Or is what are the other reasons that why that kind of catapults a guy sometimes? Uh, that's a good question, Bob. You know, certainly that could be one, you know, maybe you see him in certain roles that, that he's not had a chance yet in, in the NHL. And, and then uh, then maybe at times the role expands. You know, I think when – Phil Hironic did in Stetcher. They're a little different in the fact that that Phil was still really, really young, and, and Stetch has, you know, been in the league a few years. Um, what I would say with Stetcher's performance over there is, is you know, to, to what he, in his words, he was disappointed with the second part of his season. So instead of leaving with a sour taste in your mouth all summer long, uh, you know, he, he he can help build his confidence back up by by having that real good uh, stretch there in the in the World Championships. Obviously, made the big play. Um, to help uh, secure the gold. And so, you know, he's a, uh, uh, I just think if anything, it helps boost your confidence when you go over there and play. When, when you have an injured player when in preparation, I remember years ago talking to the, the avalanche when Peter Forsberg wrote, was out and the players just kind of said, we just have to basically operate like he doesn't exist. You know, we can't be waiting for him to come through the door and be our savior. Is that, is that the way you have to, approach I'm sure you do as a coach but how do you get the team to take that approach is that one of the challenges to just to get them to accept you know this is who we've got in the room and we got to make it work yeah and we talk lots about that you know I, I I say all the time I'm not worried about you know and this I don't this isn't a slight against the guys that are out but I'm not worried about the guys that aren't in the lineup I'm worried about the 20 guys that are in the lineup and generally 
um, you have the opportunity with those guys to go out and win. If you go out and execute and you compete and you work and you do those types of things. Um, so the principles in foundation of how you win, um, you know, is, is, uh, doesn't change at all. And, you know, I would say you know, when you lose skilled players um, who can kind of win, who can help you win when you don't necessarily play right, um, when you lose those guys, you better play extraordinarily right. And a great example of that to me was Nashville last year. They lost some high-end players. The guys that came in just did it right shift after shift after shift. And it might seem like a simple thing, but when, you, when you're an offensive guy, you're always looking for a little of that, looking for offense and those types of things. And, and when you have a group that might not have the same uh, skill level because you've lost somebody with skill, then you just got to do it right over and over again. It's something we've talked about with our group. We got to be a group that does it right way more than the other team on a shift by shift basis, regardless if we have Jacob Rana or not. Um, now, the other part of it is it's super early in the season. Um, you know, we've talked about a couple of guys that have potential to fill that type of role uh, with the Lucas Raymond, a Bobby Ryan, those types of guys, but, but they're not a Joe Valeno. They're not alone. Now, you know, other guys can step up bigger, man. So there's lots of opportunity here if you're a forward to make a big impact on this team. You got to go out and grab it. Thank you. Yep. Next up, George Malik, the Malik Report. Hi, Coach. I noticed that you were speaking with uh, Moritz Sider a lot uh, in the second group this morning. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about uh, what you feel that Moritz still needs to accomplish in terms of uh, readjusting to the National Hockey League. I know he's played in the AHL for a year, but there are still some things that it looks like he needs to tweak. Uh, yeah, you know, at the end of the Moritz, biggest biggest thing is is when he gets the puck, uh, he's 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 really good. When he's engaged with the player, he's really good. Um, you know, I think it's with, without the puck, uh, he's got to make sure offensively knows what he's going to do before he gets it. And so, you know, he's got great poise and size, so he draws people to him, makes plays. But sometimes the right plays just move it right away, just right away. Know where you're going. Let's play fast. Let's get it moving. Then you jump in the play. Um, and then defensively, when he's engaged in people, he's a really, really good defender. But you have to work and, and, and think ahead to put yourself in position uh, so that you're in the proper position to have really good gaps so you can get engaged in that guy quicker. And so I just think it's without the puck. Uh, um, and those are just learning things for young defensemen. You know, I think as we go through the exhibition season, and he's been through a, a little of this before, he's going to get a chance to see uh, different players and, and he'll, he'll have to make adjustments to his game. Now, the good thing for all of us is He's done that. He's done that on a consistent basis at every level he's been at. He's adjusted to the situation he's in. He's adjusted his game and he's had success. And I believe he will for us as well. Um, how quickly we'll see. All right, George. So this is what I would say to you. Number one, um, we love coming up here. Uh, it's a great part of the world. One of the, one of the uh, honestly, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful spots in the world. I'd like to go on a Pure Michigan ad and, and, uh, and be a part of it because, uh, you know, when we drive from the Grand Traverse Resort to Center Ice and you're driving by East Bay, I mean, come on, it's awesome. Number two, the, the, the volunteers that work here, a lot of them take vacation time so they can help this camp run smoothly. Um, it's a really amazing amazing thing and, and we don't take that for granted at all we're super appreciative of the people that are here um it, it makes for a great experience for the fans a great experience for our players uh, i can't say enough about the staff so both have been outstanding thanks for your time yep our last question ethan sears churchredwings.com uh, hey, Jeff, I uh, just wanted to ask about uh, Bergeron and uh, McIsaac and how they're progressing. Uh, do you expect them to kind of play the first few preseason games? Uh, Jonathan Bergeron will not play in the first couple of preseason games. They got to integrate their way into practice first. Um, uh, that would be it, I think, right now. That that's even you know close to kind of integrating their way into practice. So um, you know, uh, I don't have real strong updates on any of those guys, except they're just working their way through their different situations to try to integrate themselves into practice.